A very warm welcome to all the viewers of Parvasi TV. As we all know, the municipal elections are approaching and yet again we are back with one-on-one -on -one conversations with the candidates. Today we have with us Mr. Amik Singh who is running from, for the regional councillor of Ward number 3 and 4. A very warm welcome to Parvasi TV. Satsikal, namaste, hello to everybody. Right, so... Um, as we know, you're a practiced nurse yes. by profession. So yeah. what made you enter politics? Uh, that's a great question. Thank you for that. Uh, I, you know, growing up in Brampton as a kid, somebody that went away for school, came back, started working in the community, we saw challenges in our community that were always ignored. And growing up, you know, you're always told do the right thing, make sure you're supporting each other, you're building the foundation of your city, your community. It's one of the core tenets of, our, of, of democracy, if you will. And uh, I didn't see that uh, as a citizen uh, going through the proper channels, talking to different ministries, uh, whether it be Ministry of Finance or Ministry of Health to get healthcare funding for Brampton, I thought there were some roadblocks that came along the way. And uh, unfortunately, right now, the state of our current city council and region council, there's not good cohesion. And that really frustrated me because we're at a time now in Brampton where either we have to plan for the future and execute what needs to be executed, or we're going to be in another cycle of disenfranchisement, bottlenecks getting much worse. I don't have to tell you the congestion that it is to you know, go on steals or uh, seeing projects like the LRT come to Brampton three times by the provincial government and council not being able to select a route, uh, plan a route, actually build it. Um, so all of those frustrations kind of led me to come to the you know, decision of running for regional council because you know, as somebody that's grown up in the city and wants to have a future in the city, raise my own family one day, uh, I double down in Brampton and you know, uh, it's hard for millennials right now to get a home, but I actually bought a home in Brampton, uh, thanks largely to the uh, hardworking uh, hours that I did at the hospital and from public health um, and also the COVID isolation center. Uh, during COVID, you know, we found a lot of people that came to isolate with us essentially we turned a hotel to a continuous care unit you know two nurses for about 120 beds uh, it's not a small feat and I had to run that operation without any you know uh, guide if you will you just had to have good instincts and make sure that you're alleviating pressure from our hospital sector and you know those problems are now way more compounded. If you look at the news now, you see ERs closing in other parts of Ontario. And, uh, you know, we've been beating this drum for a very long time. Uh, in 2018, I, I went to the Ministry of Finance to talk about why is it that, you know, our LIN here, which is the health funding bucket for Brampton, uh, has such low funding. We had the lowest per capita funding. We still do uh, in terms of our population growth. And in addition to that, uh, I asked them, why is it that we don't get planning done for, for Brampton? And uh, it, it led to different steps. I had a town hall, and uh, it was very interesting to see, at that time, there were two parties in Brampton. It was NDP and the Conservatives. And I think it's the only town hall regarding health care that both parties came and had a discussion. I don't think in the history of Brampton you, you would see uh, two parties come together uh, for somebody they relatively didn't know because uh, it was hard for people to trust one another and there was this deep sense of cynicism that why is this person politically active? They, they, they have some intention and my intention is to make sure that the infrastructure projects, much like now, get done for Brampton because I'm going to live here long term, much like, you know, the residents that are listening to me and they want to make sure that, you know, their kids have the benefits of the programs that I had growing up and they don't feel that there's greener pastures in Cambridge or in Niagara or in Barrie or in Welland, Ontario. Uh, I want them to double down in Brampton and uh, show that this city is worth the attention to detail uh, in our staff, in, in our um, city level bureaucrats, as well as regional level that we ask for the right and the fair share for, for Brampton, and that's why I'm running. Right. So you mentioned a couple of issues here. <laughs> but if I ask you to state what are the three key issues right. or the key issues that you would like to focus on if elected, those okay. would be? Uh, as I mentioned before, the biggest challenge right now for us is uh, the healthcare capacity. And, uh, you know, somebody that worked hard at the fair deal for 
Brampton campaign with the city of Brampton. Uh, the three asks that we put forward in 2018 were to get uh, Peel Memorial second phase funding done as part of the expansion, get a second emergency, um, and uh, the province last year in their budget, finally after pestering them for months and years, and uh, you know, you can talk to our MPPs and I just mention the name of Meek Singh and they're gonna be like, oh, that guy. Um, that's, I've been very persistent with this file and uh, surely enough, we got funding last year for 250 beds uh, and an emergency for Peel Memorial, but it's still not enough. We're still 500 beds short. Uh, so that ask came from that town hall and the city adopted it. And as we're getting a new med school here in Brampton, uh, you know, it, you cannot teach medicine without having the right residency spot. So it makes sense for the province to start planning for that third hospital as well, because where are the, the med students gonna go to practice the different uh, skill sets they need to have if the city actually wants to become institution uh, from the medical side of things they need to have a much larger infrastructure that's needed and that's I think gonna loosen the wheels if you will of Ministry of Finance to give us what we need so healthcare as I mentioned first thing secondly is the LRT project as somebody that's been on the transit committee for the last four years I, as a citizen I worked very hard to persuade council please build the LRT to the end of you know working with city of Brampton and, and Brampton Transit to advocate for funding both proposals for surface and the underground option because in the past uh, downtown Brampton residents and Ward 3 residents have a challenge with where is the surface LRT going to go? Main Street is very narrow. I'm sure if people that have gone to City Hall know the challenges of parking and you know congestion that comes along with that. Where are you going to fit the LRT? And that was a valid point. And uh, we're not in favor of not building the LRT. We need to find consensus. So that's why I pushed for both environmental assessment, uh, the feasibility study, and the funding cost for both the surface and the underground option. So we put both options funded, costed to the Ministry uh, of Transportation and uh, the province and they can fund one and we start building. We start building, that's the biggest thing that we need. And lastly, it'd be the safety and security. Not lastly, but surely the, the first, all of these are the same level of priority, is car thefts have gone up. Right, uh, crime has gone up, and uh, there are things that I've done as a citizen to address the root cause issues of it, whether it's providing more services to our social sectors uh, and human services uh, with the region appeal, uh, working alongside them, understanding what their processes are to better have uh, capacity for you know renovations for shelter spaces, as well as uh, you know working as a, a shelter nurse, as an addictions nurse, to highlight that perspective as well. Um, so we have that approach and in addition to also more vigilance uh, there used to be a program called the neighborhood watch program right and uh, the city of Brampton right now has done a very wonderful pilot called the nurturing neighborhoods project and I encourage all your viewers to look it up it's essentially that model but with a very uh, nuanced approach in 2022 where neighbors get to know one another I know the real estate market has really shuffled a lot of communities and people don't really know their neighbors anymore. We want to change that in Brampton. We want to make sure that you can rely on your neighbors and get to know one another and also work in conjunction with all the city uh, departments. So the Nurturing neighbor Neighborhood Program allows for citizens to meet with bylaw, to meet with police, to meet with EMS and share their concerns in a forum. And these are not some things that just happen during election season. I want this program to continue year after year Again, feedback from the public, because I firmly believe that as a counselor, your job is to not only serve the people of Brampton uh, and Region Appeal, but also to connect the other levels of government to the residents. So if there's any federal programs, I would be you know, liaising with my federal partners. If there's a provincial program, I'll be liaising with my provincial partners to ensure that the, you know, in times right now where if there's any incentives, any subsidies, any uh, any bursaries or any sort of entrepreneurial uh, funds that are available that residents of Brampton have access to them in a timely fashion and there's no favoritism appointed. So if you are a budding entrepreneur, if you are somebody that wants to bring social change, that you have the right resources and you can lean on me to find and be astute about knowing what the right programs are. And lastly, uh, I know you asked me three, but I always like to throw another bonus one, which is near and dear to my heart, is uh, having uh, fiber optic cables 
all across Brampton. Uh, this is a huge challenge for us. Uh, you know, working at the day when there was a Rogers out outage as a nurse, people couldn't call 911. Uh, that's not okay. In, in, in this day and age. And, uh, you know, Minister Champagne uh, on the federal side is telling all the telecom companies to work together. We need to also start aligning our vision and uh, push telecom companies as Rogers is a huge uh, stakeholder in Brampton that is moving in the downtown core. Um, and all these investments in education when all these universities are coming here, do you think the bandwidth of the city is going to go down or up? Uh, logically, you would say it's probably going to go up and 10, 20 fold, 100 fold even. And you want to make sure that you know your debit card transactions are going through. People were really frustrated that day. And uh, that's something that I'm going to work with Rogers and Bell to make sure all across Brampton, uh, you have fiber optic cable, not just the new subdivisions, because it's time for Brampton to get on the information highway. Uh, if Caledon, Mayor Thompson, uh, you know, in his retiring days, has been very bold asking for every part of Caledon to have high-speed internet, it's going to go through Brampton. All roads go through Brampton. All roads lead to Brampton. So it makes sense to have congruency in planning uh, to make sure that we have high-speed internet. So. It's a very nuanced approach in all of these things I've, I've come up with, with the support of the residents of Brampton. As I door knock, as I talk to every one of you, uh, I ensure that your perspective is heard and I realign positions based on uh, what your feedback is. And I intend to do that as your counselor as well, to ensure that whatever your uh, wishes and desires are, if they're in the realm of regional government or in the ability uh, of the regional governor, sorry, regional counselor to advocate in forms like AMO and FCM, that I'm present in those forms. Uh, and I show up to work every single day. You know, city of Brampton is a shift workers town. You know, people work 12 hour shifts and they, they take some break and some people even do two full-time jobs. So they want their counselor to be as hardworking as they are because they deserve that. Um, we, we are one of the largest cities that are growing at a record pace, but the infrastructure hasn't been keeping up. And, and I want the quality of life that I had as a child to pass on to you know, uh, Bramptonians that have lived in Brampton for a long time and new residents that are looking to Brampton a, a, as a land of hope and, and to make their dreams come true. I want more logistical hubs uh, to be made here. I want the transit facilities to match the employment land. So you know, when you're standing at your first job in the middle of winter waiting for that 6.30 bus and you have to get out of your house at 4.30, I know that pain and I understand it. And I don't want to repeat that for new immigrants coming here. So having 24-7 access to transit, uh, we we have much larger uh, user base in our transit than TTC. It actually took us record time to come back to our pre-pandemic levels faster than TTC. And, and I take that as a badge of honor uh, and hats off to Brampton Transit and the Transit Committee working and figuring things out. Uh, so we support projects like this. And uh, as a federal pilot project for transit is uh, underway to have electrification, uh, you know, working hand in hand with the federal government would make sense. Uh, you know, the federal government right now is working really hard in Brampton to get, give us a third facility for storage for transit, which will have a huge impact for the city's ability to give 24-7 access transit and have a much larger uh, brigade of buses, if you will, to go down the roads of Brampton to pick people up, drop people off. And we aren't able to plan land for that. Like, that is how heartbroken I am to hear how hard our provincial counterparts are working to get us funding, and we can't even allocate land which is the sad reality of Brampton right now, that these hard pressing issues that like people like yourself and you know the listeners have gone to the ballot box during the federal election, during the provincial election, and that they've, they've told governments and parties how to go. Well, as a Bramptonian, I, I stay neutral, but I have to work with all parties and I will work with every government that's elected right now to make sure the mandates that you've sent the federal government to, the mandates you've sent the provincial government to, that they get implemented in Brampton. And that's why uh, I'm running for regional council and I hope to achieve these uh, tasks, if you will, these big challenges that, that are in front of us, they're doable, but we just have to get to work and work together. Right. You mentioned about a hardworking counsellor and yeah. we definitely do not question your hard work considering the profession that you belong to. And you also said that we all know there are reports about ERs closing every other day yeah. and it is distressing for the residents. Yeah. But at the same time, we also know that, the, that there are staff shortage, shortages, but the staff that is working, they are really working hard. Yeah. So being a nurse yourself, how hard is it for you mentally and physically yeah. to work 
when you see people, media, everybody around you questioning you? Uh, I, I don't think it, it's hard to work. Uh, you know, the skill set that I have, even now, uh, I, I'm not taking time off work because I know my colleagues work team, right? And we work with doctors, clinicians, crisis workers, addiction specialists in the ER. You work with everyone. And it's brief interactions of five minutes of a doctor passing by, having a conversation with you. You give your assessment and some good thing will happen to a person that's coming to you in distress. Uh, and I keep that in mind as a principle in how government should be happening because you know it's basically sitting in a room having conversations with people but the consensus in that room will have an impact on a generation I'll give you the example of the LRT again three times coming here uh, I have white whiskers coming in now I want to be able to use the LRT before this whole bear turns white uh, and that's what I mean by consensus of building uh, some sort of confidence in, in, in how we do business in Brampton. And I use that same principle in healthcare as well. You triage the worst case scenarios first. Uh, and we've been triaging for a very long time, but even as uh, triaging principles are there to you know, help the people that need the help first before they die, if there's not enough staffing ratios, you can't do that. I give that same example in our city. We don't have a director of Parks and Recreation right now. We don't have enough bylaw officers right now. We don't have enough people in planning right now. So if you go to a hospital and there are not enough nurses or doctors working, you're not going to get the care. The building is on, but the people there to make it happen aren't there. The same thing's happening with our city. We don't have enough staffing. So the first thing I'm going to do if elected is work with our counselors, work with our bureaucrats and our department heads, appoint them if they're not there, based on merit and make sure they have the credentials to do the job. And moreover, the the workforce of the city of Brampton is there. So, you know, our parks are clean and tidy. Garbage is getting picked up on time. And that we start taking the bold approach of implementing the things that Vision 2040 was talking about. Because it's a bold plan to make Brampton metropolis. We're no longer a small city. We've known that for a very long time. We need to start acting like a smart city, a big city, a, a powerhouse, if you will. And, uh, you know, we're building Brampton back better. And in order to do that, we need to pay attention to its residents and not sugarcoat things because I think people are tired of hearing it's going to get better. We need to start acting like it is better now. Right. So you also mentioned that you have been going door knocking. Yes. So what is the response that you're getting? Are the, the key issues that you mentioned, are yeah. those aligning with the issues that the residents are facing? Thank you for that question. Again, everything that I've done so far is community led, resident led and feedback driven. So I've all the things I'm mentioning right now, I'm hearing at the door. All the things that I mentioned right now, I heard, uh, you know, asking questions about Simply, hey, uh, you know, my name is Amik. I'm running for regional council. How can I make your life better? What quality of life challenges are you having? And, uh, you know, the implementation of the community safety well-being plan was very heightened for me because people are saying speeding is a problem, uh, that they want to have uh, more enforcement in place. And, you know, getting a $4,000 camera or a radar installed on a street is much cheaper than getting a, uh, a brand new police officer and you get better return on investment and a sense of community and starting a neighborhood uh, nurturing neighborhood program in the ward is much cheaper than sending people to hospital and sending people to uh, discharge calls from police uh, and it's more effective so these are solutions that are evidence-based and we can implement them we can do it really quickly actually uh, but we need consensus and people to work on issues for Brampton and Right now, we have a council that's divided, unfortunately. And we put our you know, hopes and dreams in these people's hands. And uh, what I mean by that is, Brampton is a very unique city in the entirety of the world. Not because it's a, a microcosm of so many cultures. Uh, the visible ones, oh, the South Asian culture uh, and uh, uh, you know the Jamaican culture, the African diaspora that's in Brampton. But you also have nuanced new communities that are going to come because of climate change and challenges that come along with that. Uh, recently, we had uh, you know uh, a flooding happen. Uh, car accidents are happening at a such large pace. Uh, we need to take you know uh, measures in a non-punitive approach that also result in behavior change. Um, you know, having a program where people are able to take their cars and, you know, explore car culture in a safer environment off our streets is backed by evidence, it's backed by police. We need to do something about that. Uh, having, you know, traffic calming measures in neighborhoods, we, we need to implement them because lives are at stake. You know, people are suffering, losing a loved one, having somebody in an accident or getting in a near miss or a collision is very distressing. Uh, you know, being 
it's somebody that lives in Brampton, we've seen near misses ourselves or been involved in one. You know, these sirens going off or the police officer coming by or the tow truck driver trying to hassle you to take your car away is, is an uncomfortable truth for a lot of Bramptonians. But there's a cost associated with that. Imagine coming from uh, uh, a country and this is your first car that you're driving or imagine you're you know 65 years old uh, driving a car and you've just come back from a hip surgery and you get hit what kind of impact on your life now is that going to have or what, financially and for health wise right and these are things that we need to start looking at a system level and the measures are going to come back from the residents it's it's not uh, okay that we are ignoring these problems and the frustration that Bramptonians have is felt, but we have to be genuine about our efforts and our plans and be transparent with the people of Brampton. I think that's the biggest challenge that we have is everybody's upset, but nobody wants to voice the concern in the right way. I can have these conversations with you and it's very wonderful to talk to you know the listenership and the viewership, but having that conversation in a room of government or a proceeding happening will actually lead to change. and. Uh, that's the, the eureka moment in my head that went up like, I'm already talking about this. Might as well have an official title to go with it that can actually bring about change. And uh, it's, it's a fun way to engage with democracy. It's a very precious gift that we have in this country. Um, and we need to ensure that our citizens uh, are feeling heard and they come out in this election. I, I, I make a plea to everyone here, uh, despite how you lean politically, how uh, challenging times are, please, please, come and vote this election uh, and let the people of uh, Brampton have their voices heard and governments all across uh, the lens, provincially and federally and municipally and regionally uh, have good representation. So the hopes and aspirations that Bramptonians have come to a reality and we move the city in a much better place. So that was it for our conversation today. Any final message that you would like to give to the viewers? If you want to join uh, online, uh, please follow uh, my Instagram or Twitter at amiksing434. Come volunteer with me. Uh, come door knock with me and uh, tell me your issues. Whatever you want to talk about, I want to hear your challenges and make sure that uh, the, the solutions I have are vetted by you and you feel your uh, solutions are representing your views and ideas. Thank you again for your time. Thank you for joining us today and we hope these conversations help you make the right choice in the upcoming elections. See you again in another video.